Alright guys, Jacob here, and today, finally, this is going to catch us up to real time. Um, in this episode, we're going to be pulling everything out of the engine and take it all the way apart. In the last episode, if you didn't see it, where I take everything off of the engine and get ready to take the engine apart, definitely check that out. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop right into this. I finally got those triple squares in, and I was able to take the head bolts out. Uh, you can see, here's the whole set. It comes with a whole bunch from... I man like size 6 all the way up to size 20 something I guess and uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen here I have that I think it's a 12 triple square size 12 inserted into one of the head bolts there and here it is again up close it fit nice and snug I had no problem at all getting these head bolts out hopping over we have the head pulled out uh, you can see we have uh, cylinders 3 and 4 the pistons up top and the others are down low so that we can take a look at the cylinder bores looks pretty nice honestly the head gasket was pretty close close to blown though here's the head uh, off of the engine taking a look inside this is cylinders five and six um, the cross hatching looked fantastic here's it from another angle all the way around it looks pretty good here is cylinder two you can see there's a little bit of a mark um, halfway up I think that's from the pistons sitting for a long time because this vehicle sat for a couple of years in a junkyard before I grabbed it like I said before um, maybe a little bit of coolant or something got in here I I'm not sure but I did the fingernail test and that's just uh, a surface blemish so I think that'll uh, uh, polish right out and here's cylinder one you can see again the cross hatching looks great uh, one thing to note um, the left side of the engine on the front the timing chain guide there's a pin that sits inside of the head here where I'm pointing and the timing chain guide sits up to the front of the engine right here like this and I had to at the tip of my thumb right here you can see there's a little bit of scratching or whatever I had to take a pry bar and put it up against that and smack the back of the pry bar to get the guide to grab the pin and pull it out because the guide would not come off of the pin so I had to take that off a little bit rough but I think that I already got a new pin and everything everything should fit in okay uh, I flipped the engine over and I took the pan and what looked like a uh, an oil baffle I took that off as well took the oil pump out and here's a good view from the front of the crank here's the crank from another angle and here's the crank up close you can see things are actually pretty clean there's some brown tinting in here but I think that's from I was told it was from using synthetic oil so it's nothing to be alarmed about and I took the crank out. Oh, yeah. Here's the block from the back with the crank out. And you can see those surfaces on the left side of each of the cylinders uh, where you can machine in some oil squirters. I have at this point decided uh, not to go with oil squirters. People are pushing six, seven, eight hundred horsepower out of this engine block with no oil squirters. So I think my target of 350 to 400 will be okay. Here's another angle. You can see the brown tinting a little bit up against the sides of the block. And here are all of the components pulled out and laid out on my table here. Starting from the left, working over to the right, we have our crankshaft. And to the right of the crankshaft, we have each of the main bearing caps with the bearings sitting there as well. Everything is still lined up and marked. Uh, next to that, we have all of the pistons. And you can see each of the connecting rod caps are laying next to them as well. To the right of that, we have the oil baffle that was below the crankshaft. And then on top of that, inside of a little uh, cup thing, we have our bolts that held that on. To the right of that, we have the oil pump. And to the right of that is the head, exhaust side facing us. And here is our parts area. You can see the head gasket and valve cover, timing covers right there, and a whole bunch of different bolts. You can see they're all nice and organized. Trying to make sure that I don't forget where anything goes or just... You don't want to make a pile of bolts. Don't make a pile of bolts. That is a huge mistake. You will never get it back together. Here's another angle of it. You can see uh, below that top cardboard box, you can see the uh, intake manifold right there. To the right, there's exhaust manifolds and all that fun stuff. Here is our head, and you can see the timing chain and the guides right there um, to the right of the head. I took the cams out, and there's the cam caps there and the hydraulic lifters as well. Um, and then to the right of all that is the exhaust cam, and then to the right is uh, the intake cam. Um, keeping myself organized, make sure that I put everything away where it all goes. These are the cam caps in here and the hydraulic lifters. 
and I took the pistons apart. I did not take the rings out though. I want to clean up the pistons first before I take the rings out. What I do not want to do is try to take rings out and things are covered with carbon and I'm scratching stuff and it's just a bad day. Uh, you can see the furthest back piston up there. I was taking the rings off, but one of the rings broke. I'm going to replace all the rings anyways, but I noticed that I was gouging it a little bit and it was all covered and difficult, so I'm going to wait to take them apart until I clean the pistons. Here's a good angle with all the wrist pins. The wrist pins all measured up really good, and you can see they're nice and shiny, nice and clean. There's no grooves in them whatsoever. They stayed nice and lubricated without uh, oil squirters. So um, they have a, a gallery that runs through the connecting rod from the main bearings uh, to the connecting rod bearings to the wrist pins. So it's all lubricated from the main bearing oil feeds, which works out really nice. And then you can see here, um, one up close, really nice and shiny. Uh, again, I measured it out, no grooves at all. So I'm going to reuse these wrist pins with the uh, sleeves in the connecting rods. Uh, one thing to note, one thing that I found really interesting is all of the components that came out of the engine um, all fit into these sandwich baggies perfectly. You can see these are the main bearing caps. You can see six right here. And underneath, I was able to fit the seventh one. These fit perfectly into this sandwich bag. It's crazy. If there was one more of these caps, it would not have fit. And again, you can see the um, intake cam, uh, cam caps and the exhaust cam caps fit exactly the same way. All seven of the caps fit into one bag. It was crazy. It's like the Mercedes developers that developed this engine made it with these bags in mind. I don't know. I'm, I, that's crazy, though. What a coincidence. So this marks the end of the catch-up episodes, which is really good news because everything else after this is going to be real-time, uploaded same day, and higher quality. So thumbs up to that. Also, stay tuned for the next episode where I do some time lapses of taking the head apart and polishing stings and uh, doing some work on the crank and on the block also. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That helps me grow my channel. I'm trying to get myself out there, guys. And uh, as always, have a good one. I'll see you in the next episode.